Well, good morning. Good morning, friends, and welcome to Community United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, and we really mean that. Welcome to worship, whether you are sitting here in our sanctuary or you are worshiping with us on Zoom or on Facebook. I can see the folks who are with us on Zoom this morning. They're up here in the front pew, and we want to say hello to you all. And we have folks gathering on Facebook as well. Welcome to worship, no matter where in the world you are. We're glad that you're here. So friends, this morning we are finishing up this worship series from a sanctified art called I've Been Meaning to Ask. And for many weeks now, we've been focusing on these questions of curiosity and connection and courage. Today, we close our series by focusing on the question, where do we go from here? We're going to do that by looking at maybe the most bizarre story that is found in the book of Acts, this story about how Peter has this vision of this buffet coming down on a blanket out of heaven. And that bizarre vision changes everything for the early church. It changes everything for us, too. That's what we're focusing on this morning. I want to thank Allison this morning for being our liturgist. And we have four whole singers up in the loft this morning. We are, we are adding incrementally to what we can do here in the sanctuary um, in order to worship fully, but also keep one another safe. And I want to thank you all for singing today. Thanks to Aaron and to our sound and video people as well. So friends, I want to welcome you to worship this morning. And who are we? That's really the question as we begin. We are young and old and middle-aged, gay and straight and in between. We are single and partnered, happy and sad, confused and inspired. We are street smart and college educated. Some of us have more than enough to share and some of us can hardly pay our bills. Who are we? We are God's people. We are the body of Christ. And no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And we really, truly mean that. Friends, welcome to worship. Holy God, we know that you are always speaking through strangers and friends through sunrise and sunset, through random acts of kindness and feelings that stir hope awake in us. We know that you speak through dreams and prayer, through a still, small voice and bursts of overwhelming joy. We know that you are always speaking, but we also know that we are inclined to miss it. Settle our spirits now to hear your word fully, that we we want to be part of the conversation. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Draw the circle wide. be our song. No one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. God, the still point of the circle, round whom all creation turns. Nothing lost, but held together in God's gracious circle wide, draw it wider still, let this 
be our song. No one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. Let our hearts touch far horizons, so encompass great and small. Let our loving know no borders, faithful to God's call. Draw the circle wide, draw the wide circle. Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. The dream we dreamed be larger than we ever dreamed before. Let the dream of Christ be in us. Open every door. Draw the circle wide. Draw it wide still. Let this be our song. No one stands. Friends, it is time for the passing of the peace, and I would invite you to rise and stay where you are this morning, uh, and you can share signs of peace. Try to find the person who is the furthest away from you and make a connection with them. I would also invite you, if you have um, a smartphone, um, to go onto Facebook, onto the church's Facebook Live broadcast, and to share signs of peace there. Also, for the folks who are on Zoom, Zoom. Peace. They're already sharing signs of peace in the comments. Um, anyway, anyway, friends, peace be with you. Let's rise and share signs of peace with each other. Oh, well, yeah. They, they override it. you. So it's time for the children's moment. I don't know if the kiddos who are here want to come up. Do you want to come up? You don't have to if you don't want to, because I will just, I'll recruit Pastor Nate. Do you want to come up? No, no. Nate, you're on. Okay, Pastor Nate and I, hi, Pastor Nate, welcome. Hey, look, I got a microphone for you. He's on two. Test, test, test. Yes, there it is. So, okay, um, I thought that we might play today, and my kids put together a pack of stuff. Happy, can you hit? Oh, it's like it's being lowered down from heaven. Thank you so much. Let's sit down um, and look at this. Let me not fall down. Okay. Um, so my kids put together this packet of toys, and I thought we might play today. Oh, look, okay, there's some, there's some Barbies, awesome. And there's, well, there's Kurt Vonnegut. Um, <laughs> I, and who's Kurt with? Rosa Parks. I see also Sojourner Truth. Are they, can they? Can they play together? I mean, they are different kinds of toys. They're different kinds of toys. There's a lot of diversity here, right? And they're different shapes and sizes. I, ju I just don't know if Kurt is gonna have anything in common with the Barbies. I don't, I don't know. This one's so tiny. Well, and I mean, and gosh, you pulled out a Lego. There are Legos here. How? How is this gonna work? I don't, I don't know. What's, what's this? Let's find out. <laughs> I just, um, I don't know if this is going to work. 
<laughs> I, I, I don't know how we're supposed to play together. What do you think? I, I think I'm having trouble seeing past the giant dinosaur <laughs> that is on your head. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is the question, right? Like, can a dinosaur play with Barbies? And can the Barbies play with the Legos? And can the Legos play with the, with the Rosa Parks finger puppet and the Sojourner Truth finger puppet and, and the Kurt Vonnegut doll? And when you say can, mm -hmm. whose rules are we talking about? That's a good question. That's a good question. I mean, I think it's possible, right? I think it's possible for all of these toys to play together. I think so too. If only we had a piece of scripture that could help us better understand that principle. If only we had one. Do you know of one? I do know of one. And I suspect it is also going to involve a piece of cloth coming down from the heavens. And yeah. it may also include some surprising amount of diversity shared in unexpected ways mm -hmm. with a very clear message about how we should approach these things, which once were thought of, no, these cannot play together into a more universal understanding of truth. Yeah, it's much more inclusive. I, Allison is going to read that story for us in a little bit, and you'll, you'll see this image and this vision of things that you used to think didn't go together actually do. Um, I, I think I think that the Kurt Vonnegut doll and the Barbie and the dinosaur could all play together and that it would be just fine. I do. Thank you so much for coming and helping me with that. Um, we have to give Xiaoyi back his microphone. And then this is going to go over here. Uh, so we have the whole of the 10th chapter of Acts reproduced in your bulletin for your reference, um, but this morning I'm only going to read verses 9 through 34a. Whether we take what is written in the Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, let us listen now for the meaning it might hold for us on this day. About noon the next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while it was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the heaven opened and something like a large sheet coming down being lowered to the ground by its four corners. In it were all kinds of four-footed creatures and reptiles and birds of the air. Then he heard a voice saying, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, by no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is profane or unclean. The voice said to him a second time, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, and the thing was suddenly taken up to the heaven. Now, while Peter was greatly puzzled, about what to make of the vision that he had seen. Suddenly, the men sent by Cornelius appeared. They were asking for Simon's house and were standing by the gate. They called out to ask whether Simon, who was called Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, 
Look, three men are searching for you. Now get up, go down, and go with them without hesitation, for I have sent them. So Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason for you coming? They answered, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man who is well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to send for you to come to his house and to hear what you have to say. So Peter invited them in and gave them lodging. The next day he got up and went with them, and some of the believers from Joppa accompanied him. The following day they came to Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. On Peter's arrival, Cornelius met him and, falling at his feet, worshipped him. But Peter made him get up, saying, Stand up, I am only a mortal. And as he talked with him, he went in and found that many had assembled. And he said to them, You yourselves know that it is unlawful for a Jew to associate with or to visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. Now may I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius replied, four days ago at this very hour, at three o'clock, I was praying in my house when suddenly a man in dazzling clothes stood before me. He said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your alms have been remembered before God. Send therefore to Joppa and ask for Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying in the home of Simon, a tanner by the sea. Therefore, I sent for you immediately, and you have been kind enough to come. So now all of us are here in the presence of God to listen to all that the Lord has commanded you to say. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. We conclude this sacred reading with this prayer. May the Spirit bless us with wisdom and wonder as we ponder the meaning of these words for our lives. After the sermon, we will pray together and offer up our joys and concerns. Your prayer requests will be offered aloud. Whether you are sitting here in the sanctuary or worshiping with us remotely, you are invited to add your joys and concerns to the prayer list. Go to community-ucc.org backslash pray. It's a Google form, or you can use the QR code in your bulletin. Oh, 
friends, we end this worship series with what is undoubtedly the weirdest, one of the weirdest <laughs> snippets of scripture. This blanket buffet from heaven filled to overflowing with food, not just any food, but ritually unclean food. And here is poor Peter, good old rule follower Peter, just trying to follow the rules about what you can touch and not touch, what's clean and unclean, what you can eat and not eat. And then this message, what God has made clean, you must not make profane. In other words, there's a new rule in town and we can no longer live any other way. That's what we are talking about today. So as we prepare for the word preached, would you join with me your hearts and minds in prayer? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A couple of years ago on Monday nights, I was leading Bible study for campus ministry students, and we were reading the book of Acts. That's what Allison read uh, from today, the book of Acts. So on the regular, somebody would stop during Bible study and they, they would say, hang on a second, that very thing or something like that happened to Jesus, but now, but now it's just happening to the disciples, to the apostles, and they're just having to figure it out without Jesus there to show them the way. Yes, I would say every single time. That is exactly what the Acts of the Apostles is about. It's about the apostles living in the way of Jesus without Jesus actually being there live and in the flesh. It's about them trying to figure out how to be the church together in the world. And in fact, that is still what the Acts of the Apostles is about, not the book written 2,000 years ago, but about the sequel, the sequel that you all make happen every day. The sequel that we act out in our lives every day as we, modern day apostles, the church here, try to live in the way of Jesus without Jesus being here live and in the flesh what we do every day as we try to figure out how to be the church in the world. Now, for Peter and the gang way back when, as Jews, they were really stumped about how to relate to strangers and to people who were different from them. It really tripped them up because there were all of these rules, important, sacred, holy rules about who you could talk to and what you could touch and what you could eat. There were lots of rules about who is clean and unclean, about who belongs and who does not belong. And it kept tripping them up because here they are, here they are trying to be the church in the world, trying to live in the way of Jesus without Jesus actually being here live and in the flesh to call the shots. And so here are these rules. And, and what will other people think? I mean, really, what will other people think if they break those rules? What will other people think? That still trips us up today. 
Now, when Jesus was here, live and in the flesh, he kept reminding them to love their neighbors and to love their enemies, to love with this radical kind of love that looks a lot like kindness and care and hospitality all rolled into one. It always looked like healing people who didn't really deserve to be healed and including people who couldn't really be included and freedom for people who shouldn't be free. It looked like heart-to-heart -heart conversations with stinking fishermen and heart-to-heart -heart conversations with confounded scholars who come to you in the middle of the night. It looked like dinner with tax collectors and sex workers and people who just shouldn't belong, but they do all the same. It looked like, for Jesus at least, making sure that the one who you couldn't trust because you knew he was going to betray you would be included and fed and served and loved all the same. It's no wonder then that Peter and the gang keep getting tripped up by those rules. We would too. We do too. So Peter has this wackadoodle dream <laughs> with this blanket from heaven and all of these foods that shouldn't be together, couldn't go together, shouldn't go together, wouldn't put together, all belonging together, and more importantly, all part of what Peter is not just allowed to eat, but should eat. This strange dream comes and resets for Peter the way of Jesus. It helps him get out of being confused and tripped up and instead clears the way and makes it possible. Now, friends, <clears throat> There are still lots of rules about what belongs and what does not belong. And whereas we may not get tripped up by ancient dietary codes, we do get tripped up by family rules and familial expectations. We do get tripped up by societal codes we do get tripped up by bias inherent and learned. We get tripped up by class caste systems. Heck, we get tripped up by decorum all the time. We still get tripped up by, but, but what will other people think? Well, apostles, Listen up. Upon this rock, Jesus is building a church. And things are happening in this world that will raise new questions about who belongs and who does not belong, who ought to be included and who ought not to be included in receiving the radical love of Jesus that is for neighbor and for enemy, the one that shows up in the world like kindness and hospitality and radical care. But things will happen that will make us ask who belongs and who doesn't belong. Who ought we to share that love with and who ought we withhold it from? 
Climate change disasters will happen. They are already happening on the east and west and our south coast. Wars will be waged and they'll come to an end and it will be messy. Who belongs? Refugees, refugee crises will happen again and again and again. Economies will crash, pandemics will come and pandemics will go. New ones will arrive and people will make choices. We will have new reasons to distrust one another. Always, always. And I am convinced now more than ever that the way of Jesus, it's the only way to get through this life. It's the only way to make sense out of a senseless world. And while Jesus may not be here live and in person in, person, in the flesh to call the shots, Jesus is here in the body of Christ. And Christ continues to show us the way every day how to love our neighbors and our enemies with that radical love that when it shows up in the world, it looks like kindness and hospitality and care. It all belongs. Go and be the church. Amen. The story of Cornelius and Peter is the story of God working through people. These two needed one another. Mary needed Elizabeth. Jesus needed the disciples. And Moses needed Aaron. In the story of our faith is one that constantly reminds us that we cannot do this work alone. So, in community, we ask ourselves, where do we go from here? And one answer to that question is that we give what we can from what we have and trust that God will continue moving us closer to that promised day. So, Family of faith, I invite you to give your tithes and your offerings now, knowing that this is the work of community. This is the work of faith. Let us give.
To give, please visit www.community-ucc.org and click donate. If you are worshiping here in the sanctuary, you may also place offerings in the offering plates as you leave the sanctuary. May God bless the gifts and the givers. So we have some joys and concerns for you today. I wanna to ask the tech team, should I also look on Zoom in the chat or are they all, no? Okay, thank you so much. Sorry, while we are worshiping, there are all kinds of problems being fixed in, in the tech world. So thanks for that. So friends, this morning, our joys and concerns Kathy asks for prayers of healing for Sophie, who is undergoing her second brain surgery this week, and strength for Sophie's family while they support her. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Kathy also asks for prayers and healing, uh, prayers for healing and safety for Elena's family. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Allison asks for prayers of patience for Leo and their family as his surgery has been postponed until September 22nd. Allison, we will continue to hold your family in the light of God's love during this uncertain time. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Pastor Connie asks for prayers for Teresa and her mother Penny as they face some hard decisions about Penny's living arrangement due to Penny's reoccurring uh, debilitating health issue. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Jennifer Cromley offers prayers of thanksgiving for Catherine's good post-surgery follow-up and prayers for clarity regarding one more treatment decision. Jennifer and Catherine, we continue to hold you all in the light of God's love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Kara asks for prayers for a friend who has received a challenging and unexpected diagnosis. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Kristen asks or offers prayers of thanksgiving and joy for her new job which has refreshed her in so many ways. She says, thank you, God, with a big exclamation mark. Um, Pastor Nate asks for prayers for his coworker in Texas who's very sick with COVID. It looks like he's pulling through, but prayers for a swift recovery. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lily asks for prayers for her best friend who's getting married in a week. Prayers that the wedding goes smoothly and that it's a day of celebration. God, in your mercy and thanksgiving, hear our prayers. Tina asks for prayers of peace and love for her friend Lee and healing for their friend Catherine and for comfort for all mourning the loss of our friend Donna. You know, we're so sorry for your loss. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Friends, certainly you have prayers. There are places and people in the world that you have deep concerns for. You also have joys that bubble up and overflow. I would invite you to gather all of those people and places together and for us all to be of one mind, scattered though we are, here in the sanctuary, across town, across the world, in other states, I would invite us all now to be of one heart and mind as we offer those things to God, knowing that God hears us and God loves us as God's own children. Let us pray.
holy, good, and loving God. We pause this morning in our worship to remember people who we know that are hurting, places that we know that are struggling, situations that are dear to our hearts that seem absolutely out of control. Holy One, sometimes it feels as if no help will come. And so God, as we pause now, we pray that the light of Christ would illumine those places and those people and those situations, that the breath of your Holy Spirit would sweep through those places and those situations and fill those people so that your goodness and mercy would be upon them and in them and would work through them. Holy One, where there is sickness, bring healing, we pray. Where there is anger, bring calm, we pray. Where there is injustice, bring justice. And Holy One, where these things will not be, we pray for peace, for peace, for peace at the last. God, we pause now so that we might lift our private prayers and petitions to you. Whether spoken from our lips or whispered from the depths of our hearts, we entrust all of these prayers to you. In your many holy names and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lift every voice and Till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. that the harsh path has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. with the wine of the world forget you shadowed beneath your head may we forever stand true to our god true to our native land
Friends, we have two uh, prayer requests to add. Uh, one is from Randy Musser, who asks prayers for all of those suffering from cancer. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And also from Matthew Hart, who asks for prayers for the friends and family of Rodney Woodworth, who recently died. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We move now to the commissioning of the community, that moment when we commission you to go out and be the church in the world. First, a moment of celebration. We had so many confirmands and confirmation sponsors uh, gather in Carl Park last week to kick off their year of study and exploration. Um, thanks to Youth Ministry Director Jessica Smiley and to all of the grown-ups and parents uh, who made that day possible. So friends, um, this week at Community, um, first, Carla is uh, off all this week. Email and messages are gonna be checked every day. Um, so, and of course, if there's an emergency, please contact me directly as usual. Um, but the office generally will be, will be closed. We will be printing the bulletin on Friday not Friday, on Thursday. Peg is like, I'm not coming in on Friday. Um, so um, so we, we will still have a bulletin and everything next week. And I want to thank the folks who have volunteered to help us this week in the office. Um, so take a look at the yellow sheet. There's lots of stuff going on. Um, one note, we did need to cancel the all church garage sale. Uh, we didn't get enough volunteers to, to be certain that we could do that and do it well. Um, but we wanna thank everybody who did sign up to help with that. Um, next week is rally day. And so we're gonna be celebrating our kiddos and Sunday school will resume. If you're a family uh, who would rather stay home, um, and we know that that's true for some folks until we're able to get younger kids vaccinated, uh, do know that we will have at-home options for you. Um, I think Julie still needs some folks to help either shepherd or teach. There's information about that in your yellow sheet. And we still need some ushers and greeters and folks who are willing to help on the tech team. Remember, church, um, church is not uh, something that, that you come and consume. Church is something that we come and do together. Um, so please, please find a way to be helpful. There are lots of opportunities these days. So a note from your mission team. Um, they have received a request from the Up Center to help out with the drag picnic, which is at 1 p.m. on Sunday, September 26th at Westside Park in Champaign. And their specific request um, is for uh, folks who are willing to intercept any counter protesters or those who may show up with any intent other than support. Um, we have scheduled uh, a training, interference training um, with Hollaback, and you can find that information on the back of your yellow sheet. This is a really, really good opportunity for us to be worth our words. Uh, and for, for us to, to stand um, as a buffer between folks who would seek to disrupt and people who are there just to celebrate. Um, so the drag picnic is from one to five on Sunday, September 26th. And we're hoping to have a few people who are willing to fill that whole slot. Uh, they also want you to know, again, that we've located some bystander training for anyone interested in helping the Up Center with this event or other events needing this level of support. Um, and so that training with hollaback.org, it's a virtual training. It lasts an hour and it's at 1 p.m. on September 14th, but you have to register for that and it's in the bulletin. Secondly, Mission wants you to know that uh, we'll soon be taking up a special um, offering, a love offering for the Up Center. We're going to do that on the Sunday prior to Pride and the Sunday after Pride Fest. And thanks to the genera generosity of a family in our congregation, those donations will be matched up to $500. So 
your dollar turns into $2, um, please be willing to give generously to that wonderful organization. Are there any other announcements for the good of the cause? Peg? That is right. So next, oh, here it is. So next Sunday is our annual, and we didn't get to do it last year, so it's fun to do it this year, our annual bike ride kickball uh, ice cream pizza extravaganza at Sydney Park. Um, the way that works is that if you would like to ride your bike over to Sydney, you can meet Tom Ward and the folks who are riding their bikes at 2.30 in the Meyer Urbana parking lot. Is there a time when cars are gathering? Okay, at the same time or a different time? At, also at 2.30? Four? Okay. Sure, sure. So, um, yes, so you can also drive over. There's information about that. It will be in the weekly email. It's really fun, so please join us. Any other announcements for the good of the cause? I, I don't have them here. Um, I know they were supposed to be here and they are not with my things. Oh, lies, lies, lies. They are here. I just didn't find them. Thank you so much. It's the beginning of a new month, so we're supposed to. Uh, this is the time when we let you know who has a birthday this month so that you can celebrate them. These are folks in our congregation who have told us that they want their birthday celebrated. So if you have a September birthday and you don't hear your name, let us know. Uh, September birthdays in alphabetical order. Bill Grop, Zoe Harms, Patrick Keenan, Jessica Smiley, Tina Stovall, Leo Tompkin, Roger Wade, and Brian Welch. Happy birthday to all of our September birthdays. We hope you celebrate big. Friends, would you please give our musicians a round of applause for today? It was just lovely. Thank you all so much. Would you rise please for the benediction? Family of faith, as you leave this place, may God grant you the curiosity to counter assumptions, the vulnerability to befriend, the bravery to speak your truth, the wisdom to listen, the strength to ask for help, the resiliency to choose love even when it's hard, and the awareness of the Holy Spirit always beside you in the name of the great connector, love itself, go in peace. Amen.